So we'll come back. Nana here and then we are into the next day's program on this efficient inventory implementation. So I can put them on share the screen. <clears throat> So if you go to the e-business documentation on the inventory front, and you go to this place, <clears throat> document on the D4, I think, units of measures. So on the e-business documentation, inventory, inventory, day four, we have the units of measure documentation. So we'll now again perform a transaction of an, I made a mistake on the other day, uh, instead of doing a, a K1910, I think I made something else. We'll now see whether the stock goes up by 1500 or not. I will open it now. So go to this, and I'll go to the quality login now. <clears throat> okay, somebody has changed the password. I don't know why it's so. The please don't change the passwords, otherwise what happens? I will be getting struck actually. <clears throat> My K99 password has got changed. So we'll now go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. Go there and go to the item monitoring. So item is a K99 underscore. Uh, a unit no? the name of the item starts with the K99. Not this all actually. I have to choose the org also properly. What is the item name I have given? Anyway, any idea about it? But I don't need the specific name actually. I cancel or change the organization to K991 now. Powder, yeah, it's powder actually. Powder 2. Manage item quantities. So K99 underscore powder, powder to the one. So click on search now. <clears throat> You'll be having a quantity of 1030 actually, and then it will now transact 10 more tins, and then it has to increase it by another 1500 actually. That is what it is. So right click and then you go to the duplicate, and then it will now perform a transaction. <clears throat> Go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management. And then create miscellaneous transaction. Drop it down. Miscellaneous result. Yes, no. Click on plus. It's powder 2 now. Okay, 99. Let's go. P O W powder two. I will now transact on sub one now. So here the unit is what K ninety nine tin actually. So K ninety nine tin is a one. I am going to make a transaction now. Fine, let us not choose the K ninety nine tin now. I think I'm gonna make something else on the salary. I'm gonna click on 10 tin section. So when you make 10 tins now, it has to show me 1500 sachets actually as a primary unit of measures. So quantity is 10 now. If I K99 tin is the one I have chosen. Click on submit now. Find the stock has to go by 1500. So we have a stock over here as what 1030. If you go on and make a research now. 1500 has to go up now. Click on search now. So click on it. 1500 has gone up. <clears throat> so this is the way it works now. So we have to, the important points to remember is what? Uh, we have one base units of measures. A class is nothing but a collection of relevant units of measures. And then every class will be having a base unit of measures. 
and then the item may have the base unit itself as a primary unit of measures or it may even have a different one as a as a primary unit of measures the primary units of measures is the stock keeping units of measures and then uh, afterwards uh, what you have to see is what uh, i go there and then uh, there is a intra class conversion and then inter class in, uh, inter class conversion intra class conversions are item specific exceptions whereas inter class conversions are peer to peer conversions and we cannot have any exceptions on a peer to peer whereas we can very well have on a intra class an exception <clears throat> so these are basic ones and now we go for the complex one uh, called dual units of measures now uh, we have a project in which what happens uh, they were buying zinc sheet in the market in kilograms they were buying it in kilograms and then uh, uh, what happens is that they issue it on meters actually in the shop floor they issue it in meters they cut it with the scissors actually and then uh, while they are cutting it there will be a slight zigzag and then uh, the weight may not be exactly equal let us say 1 meter is equal to 1 kg so in this case what happens if you cut it it will be you will be finding it is a 995 grams or 1025 grams something like that it will be slightly up and down but since they pay in grams they wanted to see the stock in both meters as well as in grams also so there are so many such situations in which what happens you'll be having dual unit measures so we are going to begin there are three such situations we are going to begin with the first one as that on the dual unit measures <clears throat> so we go there we will not go to the unit of measures fine go there click on it manage unit of measures <clears throat> this level maintenance and then we'll see what how the dual unit of measures are getting configured we have done even complex unit of measures for g actually i will tell you what later on later about that now in one of the cases Uh, we used IRIS for in which the dual unit of measures worked excellently. Manage unit. For all these things, we can go via this task itself. I mean, this task itself is sufficient now. Manage unit of measures task itself is sufficient. From here, we can navigate every bar. So go there to the manage unit of measures. Here itself, we can navigate. So now, let me create a new class. We already have a K99 weight class. We will now have a K99 length class now. Fine. Click on what. We will now go to manage UM classes. I click on this button. We will now create a new class. I click on plus now. Let us now create a length class. It's a K ninety nine underscore million length now. So the class code. Normally, what happens? The code and name you keep it same. And if you make it different, it will be very difficult to uh, follow now. Fine. Only the UM code is a three letter code. Fine. Apart from that, what happens? The class name can be and the code can be any number of letters. And then keep everything safe, so that we won't be having uh, remembering multiple names uh, for the code and class actually. Fine, go there. So here you'll now have one uh, thing now. Fine, go there. So I will now say K ninety nine, K nine, and then L. No. Fine, L is for length actually. Fine. Uh, I will now say meters actually. Fine, meters, meters, and go there. So uh, base unit of measure is what meters, meter, and go there. Description is also meter. So when you are creating a class, we have to create one base unit also along with. Yeah, recorded the value meter uh, is already existing. So okay, we'll know how to go for meter one now, right? because meter will be there. That's why that will be saying not possible. But description can be made right. So we already have meter. So the length class has got meter one as the base unit of measures. So we are creating a link with the meter one as the base unit of measures, and then the code is K9M actually. And click on save now. So the class gets created. So click on save, and then we are now creating a class. Seven close. <clears throat> now let us now go for what happens. The uh, real one now. Let us now go on the create an item object. <clears throat> so let us now go on the create an item. I click on the I go to the duplicate and then let us now create an item object in the product. You click on the product management and then go to the product information management. <clears throat> then you go there, click on it and then click on create item. We are going to create an item with the dual unit of measures actually. It has got three variants actually. So K nine nine Nostra. The root item class. The purchase is going to be okay. Now, okay. Now, so click on this. So I will now say uh, K ninety nine underscore D U O M underscore one. Dual unit sum is one. First one. I know that D U O M is the one. Dual unit sum. I just take a copy of it and go there. Click on it. Paste it over here. <coughs> And then here, this main place. What happens? I will not say the primary unit of measure is length. Actually, fine, because we issue it in length, and so what happens? The length is the one, but in weight also they want to track actually. And go the K ninety nine, and then give it a tab now. The primary unit of measure is what meter. Actually. I will not choose what. In the tin is there. Uh, we have uh, 
what's called your uh, grams fine go there so k9m k9 ha k9m k9m now can okay, unit of mass is okay fine k9m actually <laughs> so i know given k99 so it's not coming like this so the k9 i will now make a check now fine click on search now quantity class weight class and then the length class is not coming at all units of measures is actually meter one is fine is a meter one meter one is the one so click on search now so the length class so it's not showing a meter one is the one fine click on okay so we are now measuring in meter one fine which belongs to k99 length class and go click on it and then here tracking of the units of measures not only in primary but primary and secondary primary and secondary fine tracing is primary and then the conversion is both actually and then the secondary units of measures will now go and then give what k99 and then i will now put uh, the grams so k99 grams is the one which i'm going to write so the secondary units of measures is what k99 grams actually and then there are three methods of dual unit subjects one is about fixed and then default and then no default so we will now go on the fixed one only first right we'll now go for the fixed one now fine click on fixed fixed means what the conversion rate is fixed actually so there cannot be any deviation at all if it is fixed we cannot have any positive and negative deviation only on a default and no default we can have the deviations actually we can have the deviations we will now begin with the fixed and then we'll now go for the second and third now so click on fixed so in this what does it cannot have any deviation at all so it is now going to be tracked on the primary as well as the secondary unit of measure which is in grams actually on it and then i have done it you go there go to the associations then directly associate the organization and go there on sector actions and then go to select net and then here it's a k991 is the one which probably go to and select click on apply and done now <coughs> so the item is now measured in meters meter one as well as in uh, grams also so if you go to the overview you can now see it is also measured in grams also so meter one and grams of the two units of measures fine go that click on it and then it is not done fine go that click on it and then give it save and close now so k and then dom one is now ready but we cannot transact it at all because we are not defined the relationship between the two classes actually so the inter class conversion is a must before which what happens if you try to more than try to make a what's called a transaction it will not allow at all the item is now created go that click on it and then here uh, it's okay and then you know how one more average and for making a transaction and then go to the inventory tab region and then make a transaction now. so go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management and then here we're going to perform the transaction since we are not defined the relationship between the primary and secondary it will not allow out let me see this transaction <clears throat> okay so drop it down and middle is reset costing is yes and account is 10 icon and icon browser go ahead and click on plus <clears throat> Then we'll say K ninety nine underscore dual units of measures. Do I am dual dual units model one one. I go there. What is sub inventory? Sub inventory sub one. I go there. So the automatically the primary units of measures is now getting defaulted. The secondary will not default at all. I go there. Click on it. And then I will now go to the point of hundred now. I go there. Click on it. And then try to commit it. Will not commit it because we have to measure on secondary also. You must have define a dual U M conversion between the meters and then the grams basically. If this is not done, it will not allow you at all. This transaction will not be allowed. So these two things has to be done. Now. This is uh, basically what happens. Uh, we have to first of all perform a peer-to-peer -peer conversion now. And afterwards, what happens? We have to do it. Okay, it's gone. And then go there. Let us now go to this place and then perform a peer-to-peer -peer conversion. So we will now go to actions and then go to inter-class conversion. Inter-class conversion is going to relate two different classes. Now, fine. Go there. Click on it. Go to the inter-class conversion. So here, what happens? We give a plus. <clears throat> item is you put the item everything is both the intra class and inter class are uh, item specific actually dual units of measures is the one go that click on it and then and then the left hand side you have to give the destination units of measures destination means the secondary units of measures go that k99 and then it is grams k99 uh, and then give it tab no it's grams basically go that so is a grams so it comes over here on the right hand side you have to give a conversion go that so here Uh, I will now say uh, uh, what I must say. How many meters is one one gram now? So one gram is how many meters? It is a zero point zero zero one. That means what? One meter is equal to hundred grams. So this way we are doing it now. I will click on it. So zero point zero zero one is the one. So once when you give it a definition, fine. So it is equal to one gram is equal to point not 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 one point not not one meters basically. That way it has it. On the left hand side, you have to always have the secondary unit of measures, and then right hand side you have to have the primary. So this way you have to, you have to do the peer-to-peer -peer conversion. Now. Fine. 
so that you know give up thank you once again close by you know complete <clears throat> now we can very well perform now go to the gurus place and then here whatever we go there and then i will not say i am not uh, doing 100 meters i will not say or let us say 1 meter 1 meter i'm going to perform now it will not give any error at all on the 1 meter will not show you in grams also 1000 grams it will not show so meter 1 is a one on which i am transacting it and then we have what if you click on the edit details it will not show you the quantity in this place also. if you click on the edit details you cannot see the quantity in the secondary also secondary also is not showing you. not showing you so 1 meter is equal to 1000 grams <clears throat> it shows you the secondary quantity also so click on okay and then click on submit by which whatever sir this gives complete click on submit you know complete so we can now go on and have a look at the stock now fine we'll click on it and then if you go on and have a look at the stock here i go to the manage item quantities and then look at the stock item is k99 underscore dual units of measure is the one click on search now it will not show you in both the primary and secondary so we cannot see click on this one fine it i can even have the secondary quantity is not showing as what is a 1000 by on the grams and then the primary quantity is meters one on end so it shows you both on end is one now and then uh, the meters one <coughs> and go there and then if you click on the units of measure conversion <coughs> if you can see it shows you only grams if you have done any other conversions then it will not show you this thing fine apart from meter what happens the gram is also involved in this dual units of measure so all the involved dual units of measure Uh, on this transactions will also be shown. If you are transacting in on any other uh, units of measures, it will be showing you the stock on that particular UAM also. So this is the case number one where what happens? Uh, the relationship is fixed. Okay? There is no deviation now. Now we'll now go for the second one now. Fine. We'll now go and take the second item. Click on it. Where what happens? I will now say default and click on it. I'm now creating a new item. Fine. The second units of measures now. Click on most item. The root item class. So here I will again put the meters over here now. So K ninety nine dual units of measures, the second item. But it is going to be fixed. There was a fixed one here. It is a default. The default. This is a famously used one now. Click on it, and then I will go and then make a change to meters one now. Meter one is one. Change again now. So we are going to track it on primary and secondary. And what the secondary in this what K ninety nine grams. Okay. 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 Not done. So meter one is the one. I'm going to click on it. So everything is now completed. Is the instead of fixed, what happens? I now go for a default. In a fixed, we cannot have any deviations actually. I'm going to click on it, and then you go to the default. In this place, what I'm doing is I'm now going to cut the sheet actually, and I'm going to cut the sheet. Fine. I will now say if the cut piece is now having a weight of more than. Ten uh, percent or less than one percent, the cut piece will be rejected. Actually, so here actually it will not be ten; it will be very one or decimals only. Right. So the industry will now say if a person is now going to cut one meter length of a zinc sheet, and then uh, uh, and he weighs it, and if it is more than ten percent, if he is weighing, that means what the the sheet has not been cut properly. Similarly, less than ten percent, so they will not issue it to manufacturing at all. When you try to issue it, it will not allow at all. Fine. The deviation factor will not stop issuing it actually, so that way it is not going to work. So it is going to default also. How much it has to be now? In the case of default, it will not default. In the case of no default, it will not default. There is the only difference between default and no default now. So it is a default. It will be defaulting when you give one meter. It will now say the secondary weight must be thousand grams. So after cutting it, and then if you put on the weighing machine, and then see the weight. And then, if the weight of the uh, cut piece is now going to be greater than or less than ten percent, it will not accept at all. <clears throat> so go there. So go to the associations now. Click on associations. And then here go there. And then go to the actions. And then go to select add. And then let me associate the child. Okay, I mean you have the one. Choose it and then click on apply and then click on done. So the item is now created. Dual unit number is two is now created. Let us now define the relationship on this one. <clears throat> Go there. So we go there, and then we will now define the relationship. Go to actions, and then go to manage interclass. No, fine. Interclass is a peer-to-peer -peer conversion. Remember, there cannot be any exceptions on the interclass. Only interclass is item-specific exceptions. If it is existing, you have to give. Otherwise, no need to talk. And go in this example. I am now directly relating only the two or uh, uh, even the base units of measures. No, fine. Click on plus one. So beyond which, if the transaction units and then the primary units are different, that will be again different actually. And go there. So is a U O M. And then the two items two now. 
Ethereum underscore two now. So I'm now putting dual units of measures. It's a dual units of measures. Dual units of measures two. And that. So here is again meter one now. Meter one of the one. I'm now putting it. In meter one. Uh, destination unit is in grams. Sorry, sorry. And the destination unit here is in kind of like K99 grams is the one. So is the destination unit, and then here the conversion factor is again uh, 0 0.001. So I'm, I'm putting the same conversion factor actually here. The destination unit submitters, which is gram, there is a secondary unit submitter here to put it on, and then this side here to put the primary. And the primary will be coming on the right hand side here, the secondary will be coming on the left hand side as far as peer to peer conversion is concerned. Remember, now fine when you're making an inter class conversion. You have to have the destination units of measures. There is the secondary units of measures coming on the left hand side, and the primary will be coming on the right hand side. Actually. So give it, and then I now defined it. Click on save and close now. And click on it. So we are given a 10% allowance on the plus and minus. Now you go there, and then we will now try to create what. And I'll go there, click on this, and then and click on it. And then let us now create what EA transaction. And click on done now. It will now perform a receipt now. So click on it, and then go to the create miscellaneous transaction. Drop it down. And then you go to the miscellaneous result. <coughs> 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1000. <coughs> you go there, click on yes, no, fine, what is. <coughs> and then you go there, click on plus. No. So it's a K99 underscore dual unit of measures underscore 2 now. Right. Put it on the sub inventory. And then here, I will now click on the any details and then make a change. In the corner, click on the details. And then here, what happens? It will now default on this now. So if I put the transaction quantity as one now, one meter now, fine, it will now automatically default to what thousand. Now if you go and then give a more than thousand one one zero one, it is now more than ten percent actually. Fine, it will not accept. So after cutting one meter piece of uh, the uh, the zinc sheet, and then if you weigh it, and then you know it's now weighing one one zero one, it will not allow this transaction. At all. This transaction is not allowed. Do you want to transact the quantity to be updated based upon now based upon 1101 you want to update the transaction quantity or what exactly no i don't want to update the base transaction there is only one meter now fine so you say no means what it will no error out fine no error out. so the difference in primary and secondary quantity is now exceeding the tolerance limit actually the deviation limit is now exceeded and so this piece cannot be transacted now and go there so on the other hand what happens if you go there and then i may say 1102 and then you would have do you want to change? Fine. Now one will be changed. If you give a yes now, what happens? One will be changed to this. One will be changed to what? 1.102. It is now made the change. So that means what? Your uh, uh, secondary quantity is this, and then you want to make a change of the primary quantity, then it is allowed. But if you don't do this now, fine, it will not allow. And then given no now, it's not allowing you. Now everything out. So now what happens if you go there? I will now put a 1099, it will allow because it is well within the limits now. It's now giving a warning. The transaction quantity to be updated on the new secondary quantity. No, you know, give it no. I'm not, I don't want to update the one actually. Thank you. No, no. Now, what happened? The transaction will succeed. So, you have cut extra, which is now well within the limits of the deviation limits actually. So, this transaction is allowed actually. So click on OK and then click on submit. And then you can now see that this will be one meter in length. And then, isn't there, you must enter a value for the cost, like component attributes, because the use the current item cost is not selected. We made a mistake now. Thank you. So use current item cost. Click on edit details. We'll be coming to the cost a bit later now. Fine, that. Click on it. So you're now asking me enter cost details now. And then you say click on plus and no enter cost. Cost component for the item price. And then I'm going to put as one more. Click on OK. We'll be coming to it during uh, costing actually. So the item cost has been put over here now fine, because we are not using the current item cost. I click on it. So 1099 is a transaction quantity. Click on OK and then click on submit it will now pass. Costing is enhanced when compared to is now is now better. This phase actually. The transactions process no issues on it. Go to the manage item quantities. And we will now put the item over here. Find K99 underscore dual units of measures underscore two is the item. <clears throat> Click on search now. So if you see, it will now show you what both the quantities are. Find the on hand is what? Uh, it now shows you on hand of the quantity, the primary quantity is one now. And then on the secondary quantity, the on hand is what? 1099 grams actually. It shows you. So since it is defaulted, what happens? It is not showing you that 1000 as a value. In uh, some cotton industries, what they will do is uh, they will now ask you to fill up a bag full of cotton 
uh, and then uh, they will now put on the weighing. So the person who is putting it on the weigh bridge will not know how much it has to weigh now. So let us say one bag has to weigh, uh, let us say, uh, five kilos. So that guy will not know. So otherwise what happens is there is a possibility of manipulating. So in such cases, what happens is you'll be using the no default. So you will not default during the transaction and then the person has to enter blindfoldedly what is the weight actually. And then if the weight is now more than the deviation limit, it will not allow the bag to be transacted at all. So some companies will be using the no default way of uh, dual unit submitters. Some companies will be using the default way of unit submitters. Actually. So in a default as well as a no default, we have a deviation limit applicable. Whereas if you use a fixed way of conversion, what happens is you won't be having any deviations at all. We implemented a project for uh, GE actually, in which what happens is they were having, uh, uh, the thing is sold in Kazakhstan in kilograms. But manufacturing is uh, taking place in US actually. So they manufacture it in US and then uh, perform a ERISO and then uh, bring it to Kazakhstan. And then from that, what happens is they'll be distributing it to various customers in Kazakhstan. So this was a challenge for them. And then uh, what happens, we sat and then we made a dual unit submissions. So here normally what happens, you'll be performing a dual unit submissions on different classes actually. One of the length class and then one of the weight class. That we have the same class basically, the weight class. So you're booking what happens in kilograms and then what happens, you're manufacturing it in the, what's called in, in pounds actually. So what we did is we made the primary units of measures as pounds and then we made the secondary units of measures as kilograms. And then whenever a, a sales is made, what happens, it will be made only for what? Uh, on the primary units of pounds actually. So we do a IRISO on the IR form. We have a secondary unit of measures, let us say 100 kilos is now being, uh, what happens, uh, transacted upon or other agreed upon in the sales. So they will now put 100 kilograms as a secondary units of measures and then they will now process the IRISO. The manufacturing takes place perfectly on the primary units of measures and then it is now brought back to Kazakhstan in kilograms actually. So the understanding is what the one kilogram is what or 2.2, not two, something like this, some six or seven digit. So we will have an eight digit accuracy or something like that. Both the automatons, it will not be having much of a deviation at all. Once when you make a conversion. So that way it has been done now fine. So for the same units of measures also, we may even use a, a dual units of measures also for same classes. It is a very complex topic actually, so by which uh, you have to understand this. Only when you go into depth of uh, the requirement, then only what happens, you can understand this. So with this, what happens, uh, we complete all the inventory funders actually. The categories will be seeing it uh, during purchasing actually. But normally I conduct uh, the training of uh, inventory and purchasing tools, so I run it. And then the PO receiving everything, I'll be doing it during purchasing. Actually. So now we'll now come to the last topic of inventory, that is bringing in the item using FBDA template now. The file based data import report. So you're using which what happens that we can populate the items. Actually. So items and stocks, I'm going to bring it. So there are no more data loaders available in Fusion. Fine, everything is through FBDA template actually. So we'll now bring the item over here. So we'll now start this activity of bringing in. So I'll not tell you, but what exactly I'll do now? <clears throat> so I will go to the what's called SQL. I will now go to test now. I have now created one import directory. And then here, I will now delete this. <clears throat> and then, uh, first of all, we had to import the template. Now, right? First of all, you had to make the template ready, actually. We had to make the template ready. And there's a click on it. So let us now see about how to uh, download the template. Now. The first activity is to download the template. Right? There's a click on it. We will now go to docs.oracle.com. Vignesh, if uh, there is any change in the procedure, please uh, uh, educate everybody because I am now working on a old way of working now, actually. I'm not sure okay. about the latest one. Right? So if there is any any change, please tell me. You know. Now I'm yeah. going to bring the item now. Right? So after having gone to the docs.org.com, I click on the cloud applications. Mm -hmm. Click on the cloud applications. And then here, you choose your module on which you're going to do it. Uh, the item import is basically on inventory. And go there, click on it, drop down. And then you go to the inventory management module. You choose the module. And then choose your latest one now. And I'm now still in 20A only. So what I do is I will now change it to 20A. 20, so 20A. So you have to choose the appropriate uh, uh, version of yours and then make a change. Now. And then on the left hand side, you go to the books now. And having chosen the module, fine, the inventory module, and then having chosen the uh, version of your, this thing, fine, update, then it is a 20A or 20B or whatever it is. And then afterwards, you click on the books on the left hand side. And click on the books on the top. And click on the books. So you'll have plenty of books available here. Click on it. We'll be having lots of user guides, 
and then you'll be having also implementation guides right so many things will be available implementation guides right? so many things are available administration guides this will happen. in the bottom you'll be having on development fine configuration extensions are available you know and the, the groovy script is available so many things are there security is available all this thing you can download on the native so you'll be having one area called development in the development click on the html link now it is basically for file based data entry development is for file based data so the one so for the 20a if i click on the html it will not show you the template for the import of the item so here you go there and then expand the inventory right if you go there and then inventory management if you expand it that was go there so if you want to import the cycle count you can do it now find inventory balance message reports and this many things we can import on the inventory but the item is coming under uh, what happens a uh, master data management actually item is not coming under inventory management it is coming under master data management actually so this many uh, can only be as of now be imported into the system as far as inventory is concerned and then you go there so you go to this place and then you go to the master data management the product master data management so in the product master data management we have the item import so we have the item import so click on the item import fine click on the item import it comes to the items so actually it's basically pim actually fine product information management so for which what happens they have now designed 13 such templates for what happens importing the item actually but if you are working on inventory we have to fill up only the first three ones and the first three ones are the only ones the remaining are not required for pure inventory fine so let me go on the import it fine click on it i will now click on the link fine it has got 13 templates now fine click on the item import template and then let me put it on the same place now fine click on it now put it on this one test now Test. And here, I'll now go to the what's called in the test. Uh, we have import directory. And item import template. Import. I'll now go to the import now. In the import. Let me import the item import template. And then uh, uh, on the test, and then the import. I'm now saving it actually. So you now it will be available on this place now. Fine. Okay. And then if you open it up, you now give you the pre-filled template actually. Do not show you the pre-filled template. The pre-filled template will be available. Fine, enable it. And then, uh, if you expand it, fine. Uh, click on enable editing. Actually, there is an enable editing box there. Fine. Uh, so the first tab region. If you go and see, what happens? They have made so many things. You can even import multiple items. Actually, and then afterwards, you go to the revisions. You can have multiple revisions, additional revisions. Apart from the usual revisions, if you have any additional revisions, you are doing. If you don't have any additional revisions, there is nothing to add over here. And then, if you have any additional categories, we have to go there and then add. So these are only three templates which are required. The remaining are not required. So we go there, and then we have a habit of deleting everything. Click on it. We will not delete all the things. Do you do Vignesh deletion of all of the things for the other ones, or you keep it as such? I don't know how you're doing it, but we normally delete everything. Right? We normally delete everything on the remaining tab regions. The first three afterwards, what happens? We delete everything. So now we are going to prepare this uh, template right, with the values actually. I'm going to prepare this template with the values. So the first one item prepared. So for doing the item import, we need the following informations first of all, and then create it. And then uh, in our projects, uh, we have around 1.5 lakhs to 2 lakhs items. And so, what happens? I will not tell you about how we have done in our uh, item import. So let me close it now. Fine, I am not going to do anything. I am doing the same. And the next is what the required fields which are required for the item import. Fine, double click on it and then have a look at it. So let me have this item number over here. Now, fine, I will now go for the two items. Actually, uh, I have already imported test one. Now, fine, and uh, test two and three I am going to import. Item class is the root item class, and then the master org. Fine, the master org and then the master org code and then the child org child org code. And then what is the sub inventory name? I had to keep it now. Fine. The template which I am using it is a K99 purchase item. So if you go on, you take a copy from the system actually. The primary unit somebody is each actually. Fine. Uh, the code I have, the, somebody has made a each as a one, and then code as a EA. But normally have the UM name and then the code same actually. Otherwise you will not be getting confused actually. The life cycle phase is K99 production. I have taken it from the place item actually. The account will not complete a bit later. When during the uh, what's called when you transact it, when you bring the stock import, we need the account number. So I have not kept the list space as one point. Fine, go there. Click on it, and then the quantity I'm going to have it. Okay, fine. Item status is active. The active status is now going to set up approximately 20 to 25 attributes automatically, apart from the purchased item. Fine. This template is also going to set up. Fine. These two things are more than sufficient to populate very many attributes of an item automatically on this now on import. And if you give this present as active as well as the template, this is more than sufficient. The other ones are basically optional actually. So first of all, 
fill up all these values whatever has to be brought in now and the only thing is the item name is to go to vary the remaining are all going to be same actually that's one so that way we are going to do it so in our case what we did is we have chosen the lot number none of that is basically for a car manufacturing company and they don't have any lot actually so they were not using this field so we used this for our batch control actually uh, at the time when we were importing, uh, we have a limitation of only 500 items can be imported. Uh, Vignesh, do we have still the limitations or we can even go for any number of items in one go? Mm, there is no limitations. There is no limitations now. Okay. Yeah, for Previously, we used to have only 500. One year back, I was uh, giving a support to Saudi. There also what happens, uh, we were having uh, in uh, June, I think, June or May, March, somewhere else, what happens, uh, we are doing it at the time, what happens, uh, the limitation was there. Only 500 can be kept on one uh, template actually. So we designed our own methodology. They were not using a lot number. We had to identify a field which, what happens, we are not going to use it now. And that I will not populate on this now. And then every, uh, there were, we are having a lot of freshers actually. And then uh, we have given uh, uh, everybody some around 15 to 20 templates to be uploaded now. And so find out each of each, each and every Excel sheet. And then uh, we are given batch numbers. <clears throat> So I will now use the same concept of batch number. If you feel like you can use it, uh, I will tell you about how Vignesh has done it in uh, in MZR actually. Fine. After I complete it now, so we are going to import it. <clears throat> Vignesh, do you do the assignment also on the same sheet, or you do the assignment? Yeah, the same sheet itself that we have done. Okay. We have done nearly sixty-one thousand two hundred lines. Oh, on the same sheet itself. That is uh, sixty-one thousand. Uh, that is uh, sixty-one thousand master items and then sixty-one thousand child items, isn't it? Uh, totally, total count. So 60, that means 30,000 master items and then 30,000 child items. Or maybe uh, different, fine. Right? It may be multiple, yeah. so multiple yeah. child dogs. Let's say you have two child dogs. So what happens? Uh, the master items are 20,000. So 20,000 into three will be 60,000 lines he has added. Right? But uh, we had a limitation problem because of which what happens? Uh, we created the item in the master and then later on we assigned it to child actually. So child assignments was done by a different team actually. And then... Uh, uh, Pushing it into the table, base tables, what happens has been done by the main team to do it. So you go there. I will now open up a filled template now with all these values actually. Fine. I will now open up a filled template. So click on it. I will now, I have already filled up one item import. One. Fine. Double click on it. So this I am going to use it now. Fine. Click on double click on it. I will now use this sheet. It is already filled one now. Fine. Double click on it. So here I will now use what uh, batch ID. Uh, we are, I am now going to use my birthday actually. Fine. 16 60. That is the birthday. Fine. The batch ID and batch name. I'm not keeping it same. No, fine. 16, 0, 7, 60. Uh, Vignesh, is it required that uh, the batch ID and batch number has to be same or only one is sufficient? You use ID and batch. Both batch. Are you it? Hmm? Maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I, we used to do the same thing now. Batch ID and batch number is the same actually. I will not have this item as item 2 now. And then this is my master. Or I am not assigning to the child or means what I have to make one more entry over here. Now we are not done it actually. So here also what happens? I am going to make it as what two now. <coughs> over there. So this is a template now. And then this is a so system code is P A M D H. Fine. This is a PIM, PIM D H. You, to, you don't change this system so system code now. And go back on it. And then I am now using a root item class. In Vignesh, what he has done is uh, he has created items in uh, five different uh, uh, item classes actually. And then uh, they have populated the appropriate root item class for each and every item. So here, uh, if uh, let us say raw materials is the one and the fin semi-finished goods and then finished goods like that, what happens? He has now created that many root item classes now. But uh, in our case, what happens? The raw material item itself will be crossing more than one lakh now. So we created everything on the root item class only. So we can even create multiple item classes and then uh, what happens? Uh, we can even import it separately actually. The primary units are each. The life cycle phase is now production. And then is active actually. And then uh, we are now given this. So these two things, what happens? You are... Uh, Active status as well as your uh, this thing now, and your template now. And will now populate so many things. The template, this template of K purchased item as well as the active will now populate so many fields. And then if you want to populate any more fields also, we can even try. Find that you can try now. So here, uh, allow uh, maintenance uh, as All these things, we are not keeping it as such now. Find that. So the costing is enabled. This is an item defining attribute, and then the status attribute of inventory asset value is yes, no fine. So while you're transacting it, I will now bring the cost also. I'll not show it to you. Fine. So these two things are must find the costing enabled and then inventory asset value for the item to be costed actually. So a costed a transaction can also be performed while you're bringing in the uh, transactions. With so the remaining fields, uh, if you feel like any other minimum order quantity, maximum order quantity, whatever you want to plan or make or buy, uh, you can all add it. No fine. We are not adding anything else. No fine. 
the starting bit number. So here I will now go to the lot number, fine. Starting lot number. I'm going to use it. Fine. So I'm now using the starting lot number for my batch. Fine. Here's the 19, fine. Uh, the, uh, 16, 0, 7, 16. The same batch number I'm putting it in the lot number actually. So that is what we have done it, but you can do it in a different manner actually. So the, the lot, whichever field is not used, you can use it for your batch control actually. I will not remember how we did the batch control. 16, 7, 19, 16. But again, nowadays what happens, it is now allowing you uh, any number of uh, uh, rows on an Excel sheet. Actually, previously we had a big big problem. Even one year back, we had a problem of what, uh, only 500 lines are allowed in one sheet actually. So because of which we resorted to this one. So starting lot number 16, 0, 7, 16, fine, go there. The remaining, nothing else is now enabled actually. So the one, and then we are not added any uh, revisions now. Fine, no revisions and then no categories addition. Fine, they are out there. And then the rest of the fields, rest of the sheets have been or I'm emptied out actually. Fine, we are not creating any more. Now we go there and then we will now create one more item also. That will go there. So this is the one. I will now select it and then I will now take copy of it and then paste it actually. Okay. So here, what happens? It will be input test three now. So click on it. I'm going to make it as three. So two items I'm going to make it. The rest of same actually. Go there. So, uh, where is the description now? <clears throat> so, this is the item now, and this is the description. Actually. Description, so I'll make a change to three. So, two and three, we are now bringing in. So, this is a two, and then this is three. And come in. So, we have filled up the template with the information. Now. So, K99 import test uh, one, and then what happens? The two and three are now coming in. So, my batch number is what? 16, 0, 7, 16. Now we had to create a zip file. Having filled up all the three templates, the remaining are not required from a, a inventory perspective. And go there, click on it, and then go there. It tells you about how to do it now. Fine, it gives you a lot of information on this. You can even read it actually. But uh, nobody reads it because once when they know the procedure, they will not read everything. Fine, go there. So everything is uh, shown over here now. Fine, you can read and understand it. If you are now doing a Jeep import, find some other import you are making it. Fine, you have to read it once at least. Then click on the generate CSV file. And click on generate CSV. We are going to create a CSV file, comma separated value file. And click on it. We are not going to generate it. So once when you generate it, what happens is asking you. I will not say. Uh, I will not put the same number. Mine right? sixteen uh, zero seven sixteen. My birthday. I'm putting it now. And then I will not keep it on a place. Click on a secret. And then here you go there. I will not go to what's called test. In this, I will not go to the import directory. And then here, what happens? I'm going to give it sixteen zero seven sixteen. I'm going to save it now. And click on save. Previously, it will be saving every Excel sheet. Now, what happens? It is now saving only once now, actually. It goes and then saves as only one file, actually. Previously, it will ask every Excel sheet will be saving it. And then finally, what happens? The zip file gets created, actually. The generated CSV will be in the form of zip file now, fine. CSV and zip files have been created. So now the activity is now ready. We can now bring it to a, what's called an area called 16076 is a zip file actually is a compressed file. And then we can bring it to a universal content management actually. There is an area called universal content management, UCM area. So we had to bring this into the UCM area actually. So let us now go there, go to the system and then we'll now bring it to the UCM area. Go there. Go there. So we'll now bring it to the UCM area actually. So here, if you go there, click on the tools. <clears throat> if you go to the tools. Fine, here. File import and export is the one by which what I will be bringing it into the UCM area. Click on the file import. In the tools, we have a file import and export. And otherwise, you can even go via the top now. In the top also, what happens if you click on the navigator, the tools, we can even go to the import and export. Now, file import and export. So, one of the way you can go in now and record it. Then we'll go there, click on it, and now bring it to the UCM area. Click on plus. So, the UCM area, the universal content management has got multiple partitions actually. Click on choose file. We're going to choose it now. So here, I will not choose the area where I have kept it over here now. Click on it. I will not put the test over here now. Click on C colon and open the test now. And then open up the import now. So this is the one. Find the file. Choose the file. And then park it in the appropriate UCM compartments. Now. UCM is now having plenty of compartments if you go there. So it is all on supply chain SCM. Fine. It is SCM item import. If I press yes, everything starting on S will be coming. It is SCM B2B configurator. Fine. Again, yes. Again, yes, keep on pressing yes till you get your value now. UCM, SCM item import is that UCM partition area. SCM, SCM, SCM. And go there, click on it. So, go there. Item import is the one. So, choose this area. So, I'm going to park it in this UCM compartment, this file. Click on save and close. My 160760 will be getting saved on the UCM compartment. <coughs> 
the universal content management is now getting populated of this value now we bring it to the what's called your uh, what's called your interface tables now. right click on the duplicate now we are going to bring it to the interface tables so from the ucm area we have to bring it to the interface tables of pim actually go there we will now go to the tools or not we will now go to the scheduled process so click on the scheduled process from here what happens we are going to bring it to the interface table click on the schedule new process and then go there so here i will now say load interface file for import the concurrent name is what the load interface file for import now Click on search now. <coughs> the load interface file for import. So choose this now. Fine. Load interface file for import is a concurrent. This concurrent will now bring the UCM into the interface tables of it. Click on OK now. It will be having a lot of parameters to pass now. Now you have to choose the appropriate UCM compartment where our file is already parked. We have already parked the file. Fine, go there. So we have parked the file. So the parked file is here now. Fine, one second. <coughs> So the part of the file is here now, and this place is there now. The part of the file is there. So you go there, click on it, and then here, drop it off. And you have to choose the appropriate item import only. If I choose some other UCM area, your file will not be visible at all. Go there. If I choose import, please, and then if you look at the data file, you will not find the data file. You go there. You click on the data file, it will not be visible because we have parked it under the item import now, SCM item import. So we have to choose the item import as a UCM area, actually. Yeah, click on it. So let us now choose it now, and click on it. So item import is the one. Using area where to choose it now. So it becomes very difficult to search for it. Otherwise, what happens? You can go and then click on the search and then search for the item import. Go there. This item import. So item import, I'm going to make a search now. And the UCM area, I'm searching it now. Import. So it's item import. <clears throat> it's a case sensitive actually. Some searches are case sensitive. I don't understand why it's. So I am importing on okay. Now having chosen the appropriate UCM compartment area, if you drop down, your data file will be there. You can find the data file. And then we are going to submit it. The moment I submit it, this file will be moved into the interface tables and then it will no more be available on the UCM area at all. The UCM area will be emptied and then it will be brought in. And then click on submit now. And then it has got 13 sheets and then what happens there? 13 different concurrents will be running for this now. Fine. So we are going in. So load interface file for import is now going to bring the UCM parked data into the interface tables of PIM actually. Click on submit. Submit again. And then there are plenty of concurrents will be running now. Click on it. And have a look at it. So you know fine. So many load interface file for import is now running. And then it will be running so many other concurrents. So you know, past actually, fine. Now you can see so many things. And during uh, bringing it from the UCM area into the interface uh, table area, it will not validate anything at all. It will not, just like that, whatever, so garbage in, garbage out. Fine. Everything will be brought over here. If there is any error, it will not make a check at all. It will not even make a check. So it's not coming, fine. It's all succeeded. Fine. Wait for some more time till all, all the load interface paper import, all the 13 sheets are getting, uh, what happens, upload over here now. So the load interface file for the import, the base program, there are no spawned so many concurrents, so many child processes. So everything has got completed. So it is now in a, what's called, uh, what's called, second. it is now succeeded actually. It is now succeeded. Now we are going to bring it from uh, what's called your interface table to the base table. At the time, it will now validate everything. Click on it, schedule the process. Now it has reached the interface table. Now we are going to bring it to the base table. Click on it. it is item import of the concurrent. So item import of the concurrent. Go there and then run it. Item import the concurrent. So choose the item import and run it. So the interface table data will be brought into the base tables now. Okay. So it has got a lot of parameters. So normally what happens is we do the batch number, and then we will not give any other information. Batch number is excellent one fine. 16, 0, 7, 60 is a lot. So the remaining need not be proper. Fine, go there. So everybody will be having a batch number of 500, 500 sheets, fine, click on submit. So by which what happens, the import process will now begin. So at this time, what happens, it will now validate all the data on the interface tables. If any validation fails, item import will fail actually. Whereas when you're bringing it from the UCM area into the interface area through the load interface, nothing will fail actually. Everything will now succeed. Even if there is any garbage, the garbage will be brought and then dumped over into the interface tables actually. So any mistakes on this one, what happens, it will not be sensible. Well. Whereas item import is going to validate each other. So it will now perform first of all a pre-processing 
and then afterwards what happens it will now spawn a child for importing it actually so that will be properly happening now so we are given a starting lot number also fine if that methodology works out easily what happens if you have lakhs and lakhs of items uh, we may have to switch over to that methodology actually because we succeeded in doing that actually because item maintenance will be easy when you have batches of 500 actually so when you have multiple batches it will be easy for us to maintain items actually so to think over it uh, during implementation uh, whichever uh, whereas uh, he's saying that 60000 lines is now straight away populated on the excel sheet that is what he is saying now so he succeeded in doing it also so item import pre processing is again running then what happens you will be finding that your child import will now begin now <clears throat> item import child is going to begin now so in the pre processing it will be checking everything whether everything is okay or not and it is now passed actually it's now running and after that check everything is completed what happens you can now see the item import child will be running now so it is now spawned so the item import has now spawned the item import child actually and then it is now running so upon completion of it what happens you can now see that item will be imported actually some more concurrence also will be running now actually after everything is completed so item import key status is the process api is also running actually so now everything is now getting completed and then what happens it will be succeeding so if any one of them makes a failure what happens you can now see the item import itself will not fail i will not show you the import failure actually i will not show you the import failure actually. so let us go there and then you will not have a look at it <clears throat> we go there so we will not go to the stock and then have a look at it go to the item and then go there so go to the product information management and then you go to the product information management and then now check the item and then I'll now go to manage items. So it must have come into the base tables of this now. So here I will now add a field now. Find the starting lot number. Let me add it now. Find that is the field which is not used by us. And then so what happens? We used it now. Find click on that field. So I'm going to use the starting lot number. So click on the query example. It is basically a flow one actually. Click on the query example. And then query this one. Find it is a starting lot number. Starting. And then you enter now. So you yeah, know we're writing it now. So it's not coming out. Starting lot number is coming. Then select the line now. Click on add. I'm now going to add to the query actually. I'm going to click on it. So it is now added and click on it. So we are now added one more field for our search actually. And then I will now put mine now. 16, 0, 7, and 16. And then click on search. It will now show you both the things now. So here, uh, why these are mandatory? I don't know this. What to do now? Fine. The out of these three, one is a mandatory. It's very difficult actually. <sighs> I'll not say the not uh, equals and start with one of the I won't show it. But uh, this way we used to go, I don't know, maybe in the advanced level we have any search there. I don't I want to avoid this basically this thing, these three things now. Because item will be different actually, fine. But the batch only had imported. I don't know. I forgot another how, how people have done it actually, fine. They have not done this. It may be uh, something else now. Fine, so go there, click on it. So let us now put K99 now. Now it's okay uh, for us. Everything is beginning in K99, but that is not the correct way actually. If I click on search. So once when you search for it, you'll now find both things. Fine, go there and then hide the images now. The images you hide it and then see it. You can now see the second and third item. Is now. So with a batch number, when you query, what happens? You'll now get this now. Fine. Maybe some other field they use it now. Fine. Apart from that. Description starts with if it, uh, it it is not blank is is excellent actually because only the batch I want to query now we used to query on the batch only and I don't know how they have made it and something uh, they have made it not then we can check the add fields option yeah. add, add field, field. Add. what exactly we can add now here add fields it's a lot number or no lot number is a space number. there I have given my batch number actually. I want to query on that now. I want to have a star star field actually. If there is any other star star field which is of a lesser importance, it will be great actually. Star. I'll see root item class. A root and then make it query now. Click on and add it. Root item class is not that. It is not an attribute actually. It is not an attribute. So give it hands. Query. Okay, yeah, think over it. But we did it only with the what's called our batch number. Now we do it what? We will now select everything and then we will now mass assign the item to the child. Now. And now go and then mass assign it. So 
by the left hand side what we do is we will not click on this the box right? if you click on it what happens if there are 500 items all of them will be getting selected in one go actually in one go it will be getting selected and then here we go there and then click on it what happens you go to the actions then assign it to the child go to the actions and then manage item mass changes actions manage item mass changes and then you go to the top assign to organizations so this way but you, here we have some restrictions only fine can be done ah, you have manage item mass so changes here you are having fine that there uh, excel sheet you are having everything isn't it um, yeah right this you are having fine that so or other case that that, uh, that restriction still apply that what you saying now fine but we have a 500 only for the excel sheet also so uh, by this what happens uh, your throughput will be getting limited so what happens we assign via this now and click on the plus now go there and then we'll now put the organization code k991 and then make a search select it and then click on okay now how you will now query only 500 it becomes very difficult na here uh, from query. here it will be difficult there ah that is why with a batch we can very easily query 500 okay so okay. i think that is the reason they are uh, assigning it through the template itself exactly uh, through this what happens we will now assign it via this something so that is why we are doing this is the, this is the organization for which what happens we are going to assign it now fine we are choosing this organization and then afterwards what happens the packs and then item structures that will be coming in bomb we will be seeing it a bit later now <coughs> so click on okay now. so we are now assign we are going to assign it now it is now going to again import the item actually any activity of a change of any attribute also what happens it will be triggering an import now i click on submit now so now what happens an import process will now begin the process was submitted and we'll click on it and then wait for the uh, concurrent now item import is now going to happen so item import has begun now and again all the process including the item import child will be happening now so we wait we had to wait for all the all the concurrence to complete now now we can see there will be four entries on this there will be four entries which will be coming up So, Vignesh, try to find out about how to query on the manage items for browse item forms only finer items. How to stop it? Oh, okay. It's very difficult if you don't have any batch number. So, it is preferable to go in batches of a fine red or four ninety nine or four ninety eight. Don't go for full fine red now, because this screen is saying the limitation is still there. Here, only fine red will be processed even if you choose the lot. Yeah, I have got around five thousand items. and then i selected all but only the first to 500 got processed in my saudi implementation you know we are supporting saudi and then we couldn't do it at all and then uh, we asked them to resort to a, a, a batch number in one of the fields which is not used so it is a preferable method of import also okay on it i'm sorry is not running fine go to click on it so it's all done now fine go to click on it so manage data machine this and then you will now make a search again now you will now find four entries over here fine click on search it will be finding four entries so the two on the master and then two on the child so this way we assign the items actually now i'll tell you a problem now the problem of import now now let me add what happens here field called list price now fine go to the view and then here what happens add columns fine click on add columns and then i'm going to add a list price now fine go to click on it Now say list price and go there. List price is basically a master control attribute. So go there. I will now choose the list price over here. List price. List price is coming. And click on it. Click on it. And I can position the field anywhere now. Now let me go on. I can position the field. So let me go on. Here now on the bottom now. Fine. Let me bring it up now. List price. Let me bring it near the long description. below before item class i want to bring it now this price and bring it over here now and so give okay, so you know i'm adding this list price on this place thank you that it will be coming in the middle of it now so after the long description we have this price now what i'm going to do is i'm going to again search on uh, my criteria of my batch number fine go there and then after having selected what about go there and then i'm going to modify this now click on it and go to modify Go there. Click on it. Select it. Select all the lines. You go to the actions and then go there. Go to the manage item item mass changes. Click on it. And then here I will now go to edit item attributes. On the manage item mass changes, I have done the assign to organization. Now I am going to go to item edit item attributes. I am now making purposely a mistake now. You know, see edit item attributes. Now it will now show you everything. So we can even edit the columns actually. Fine. Go there. Click on it. And then if you say I want there are this many columns are available here. All the columns are shown here. If you make a change to let us say 1.8, all the columns will be changed. 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21,
right? You can say all the rows will be changed. Click on apply. If you make a 1.8 change, all the rows will be changed to 1.8. Now I'm now making what happens a purposely a mistake in our final. I will now make this as what 1.6 now. This is 1.7. So this is 1.8. And then this is 1.9. This is not allowed at all. Because you will not be able to update it on the child org. Master org, we can very well update it. But what happens? You cannot update in the child org. So I'm not giving individually fair. So, or a column wise, we can even modify and then click on apply. The entire columns, all the selected columns will be applied, all changed in one go. Now, I'm making a mistake. Right? What happens? It's not done. And the click on what happens? It close it now. Right? I will not give apply it. Right? Click on next now. Right? Click on next. So click on next and then I'm going to do the item import again. And then this time it will fail. Right? Click on next. We'll now see the failure. Now. I click on submit. Now the item import is now going to fail now. And only for it will not partially fail. It will not fully fail actually. It will not partially fail. So click on this monitor. And we cannot see. This will be having a partial failure because what happens? The MCAs cannot be updated. The master control attributes cannot be updated. The update in the child org. And I'm giving different different prices in every master and child actually. So you can now see this item import will be having a warning or something like that. But it will be succeeding in the master dogs. It will be failing on the child dogs actually. It will be failing on the child dogs. And both the child dogs, it will not fail actually. So during import, it is now going to validate everything. Now. Whereas when you bring it from the UCM area into the interface area, no validation takes place at all. No validation takes place at all. So here, you are now going to do what? A yeah, validation of everything now. Only when it succeeds, what happens? It's going off and that. So I didn't put data quality is now running. Previously, I don't think I have not seen this in Kangra at all. But two of them will succeed actually. It has succeeded. No, I didn't put pre pausing is again running. Then the, it will not spawn the child now. I didn't put child has to be spawned now. And now item import has to end in a warning actually. After the item import child, whatever item import has to end in a warning. When I do a download on the spreadsheet, I have an issue now. I will not talk to you, Vignesh, tomorrow actually. We can even modify the attributes on the spreadsheet also. I have a problem there. So it is now running. We can now see item import will be ending in a warning actually. Item import child has now got completed. Now, this has to end in a warning actually. And that will be giving you a clear message about what exactly is the problem now. So, one more item import child is happening now. Maybe it's now split into two actually, maybe. <clears throat> one of them has to end in error actually. Error or warning. Okay. It is now running. It has also succeeded. The item import is now passed. <coughs> So now I have book as a process AP is now running and we'll click on it. And then once when everything gets completed, this has to end in a warning. No completed if I go down. I'm gonna have a look at it now. It has succeeded, come on. It has succeeded now. Somewhere I used to see a, a error actually. And now everything is not showing as a succeeded actually. Anyway, we'll now go there and see this now. Fine, click on it and then we'll now have a look at the item again now. We'll click on it. We'll close it now. We'll now search for this item. So click on search now. Fine. We are now given different different values on this now. Fine. Click on it. Close it again. So we'll now go there. List price 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. It has now accepted it. How come? Maybe somebody might have changed it as what? As a OC actually. Fine. As an org control attribute. So that is why it is allowing you to change everything. Then once when it is our control attribute, after assignments, what happens? Everything gets delinked, and then we can even have uh, different different values and different different objects. But this must be a master control attribute. When, uh, I have somebody uh, or people are fiddling around on the OCS and MCS for testing purposes, and don't do the basic ones. Now, fine. Otherwise, it will not end up in error, and then it will not show you clearly that the MCS cannot be changed on the child. So with this, we will not stop and then tomorrow we will now export it in the spreadsheet now and then try to update it. There I have some issues now. I will now discuss with Vignesh. Have you, Vignesh, have you done the export into uh, what's called a, yeah, in an Excel sheet? Oh, spreadsheet, we didn't uh, do anything. We didn't do spreadsheet. Yeah. There I have a doubt now. Fine. Only template uh, and the mass item change. Okay. Then, yeah. 
<clears throat> we'll not see that uh, spreadsheet also because if there are huge number of items, it is always uh, a spreadsheet is an easy one to update actually. I'm not here. In this place is not a so easy one actually. And that to whatever the querying only 500 each on every query actually. A query of 500 only will be processed. Even though the result is more than 500, it processes only the first 500 actually. As far right. as the change is concerned. Good then, uh, Ram, uh, you have understood the import, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah yes, sir. Yeah. I already you done for some import also, fine. Yeah, yeah forecast import either. Uh, forecast import, you already know. Fine. So we'll now see tomorrow uh, the uh, what's called the spreadsheet import as well as the stock import also, and then we'll continue on this. Bye for now. Yeah. Thank you.